Boxing King Media in association with boxer Frank Smith at Madison Square Garden today at the Hulu Theatre. I think you just got asked in your last interview, how many tickets do we have left for Saturday night? Not many, we're close to a sellout. It's going to be we're at about, I think, 15,000, 16,000 now. So it's going to be a sellout, which is quite amazing. I've got to be honest, when we first announced this fight, I knew it was big, but it's, I think it's gone past even like my expectations of it. So it's great to see, and uh, it's going to be an amazing moment on Saturday. It sure is. Uh, I think one of the fights that's probably not getting the coverage at the minute is the Liam Smith Jesse Vargas fight because that's potentially a fight of the night, if not a fight of the year. Because them, the, them two guys are going to trade. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know what? That that's a fight that could headline a card in its own, own right. And was supposed to. I'm glad we could get it on so quickly. You know, it was unfortunate when that fight was originally postponed. Um, but you know, two guys, those two are going to go in there, and it's going to be like you say, it's going to be a, a, a war in there. You know, this is a huge moment for both of them because they come out of here, and the next thing for them is going going to try and become world champions again, each of them. Amo Williams in a tough fight against uh, an unknown quantity, but I've been following Cordell Booker for a long time and the guy can really fight. But he's got a similar sort of story to Montana Love, who was a great fighter but never got the platform and he's finally got his chance. Is there a risk that Amo Williams could get derailed this Saturday? Yeah, look, I'm a fair play to Amo Williams because he always wants to take a test. He never shies away from it. You know, Cordell Booker's 19 and 0, I believe, his record, or 17 and 0, um, and it's a, it's a great fight. And Amo has always been like that. You know, even when he fought Dennis Duglin early on, in, you know, not long ago, but uh, still early in his career. You know, Amo wants to take challenges, and, and you have to respect him for that. So, you know, it's a big fight because whoever comes away with the win on Saturday has got a big opportunity. You know, sort of pushes him into contention to, to big fights. Interesting. Uh, I just I spoke to Eddie uh, a few moments ago, and one of the things I noticed from being at the Fury White fight, I noticed Sky Sports were there, obviously publicising the fight and promoting the fight. But I haven't seen anything about this event, which is potentially the, you know the biggest women's fight of all time. You got any comments about that? Why Sky are not publicising this fight? Uh, yeah, look, I think it's a shame, really, because Sky Sports have always prided themselves on being. A sort of impartial broadcaster across Sky Sports News and Sky News, um, and look, we've we've had a long relationship with Sky. We still have, you know, in other sports as well. Um, so yeah, it is a, it is a shame because this fight deserves the exposure. But don't get me wrong, we've got exposure from every all other angles that we never expected for this fight. You know, it's, this has really grabbed people's imagination both in sports, boxing, media, and outside of that as well. So, you know, we're very happy with the promotional push we're giving it. Yeah, 100% should, should Sky Sports News be covering this? I definitely think so. And I think that in general, we, like you say, we saw what they did with Fury White the other week, which was on another platform, and uh, even, even a few bits on Sky Sports News. But that is what it is, and I think we know the reason why, that, why that's not happening. But, you know, hopefully in time, you know, because it is a strong platform, it's a great platform, so hopefully in time we can, we can try and have discussions around that because ultimately we, it's in everyone's interest and this is what DAZN do well, they want to grow the sport of boxing as a whole, you look at their social platforms, you look at the, the content they put together, they cover every aspect of the sport because they, they see that it's the best thing to do. If we want to grow the sport, we need to, can't just be in our little bubble of this is what we do, it's important to grow the sport as a whole. So. You know, and, that, and that's that's why it's good from this angle. Maybe in time we can uh, we can get we can move that around and hopefully uh, get some coverage. You touched on it there, saying you know we know the reason why. Obviously, am I, am I assuming right? It's to do with the fact that Eddie left Sky. Is that the reason, or is there other politics behind the scenes? Yeah, no. Look, that can be the only reason. You know, we were with Sky a long time, and I don't feel like we left on on bad terms. We had a great relationship, and you know, there's still AJ's obviously. You know, in discussions now, both with with various broadcasters, as we know, but he's been with Sky for a long time. As I say, we've still got a partnership with Sky across our darts, across our other other events we do. Um, so, you know, that, it doesn't make much sense to me, but that can be the only reason why, because otherwise they would be here covering it like they covered Usyk Fury, wouldn't they? And do you feel you're getting uh, Fury White? Um, and do you feel you're getting enough publicity from, I think the BBC have put a few things out, do, is that going to be enough to obviously give you guys the limelight that you need? Look, I think, like I said, this is being covered not just by sport media, by boxing media, but outside of that world as well. You know, we're getting coverage all over the place. We've worked, you know, worked on a lot of partnerships to give this fight a massive push. And look, as I said, it's outweighed even my expectations of, of where we get to. Um, you know, DAZN have done a great job. I think we have MVP as well and Jake Paul. MSG have been a great partner, so ultimately we're happy with what we've done.
you know, and I think we've really delivered on this promotion. So, you know, I, I'm not concerned from that front. I think we've gone above and beyond, and you know, some of the some of the things we've seen have been brilliant. Sound. Any update on the AJ Usyk situation? I know conversations still ongoing. Rumours are suggesting that it's going to be in Jeddah. Could you shed any light on that? There's still lots of discussions going on. We're working with all sides at the minute, and hopefully, in the, you know, we we obviously need to get everything in place. It's 12 weeks away, I think, from this weekend. 11 or 12 weekends away. Um, so you know, we're working around the clock to to get everything in place. But you'll have news as soon as we have it, because we know uh, people are anticipating it. Frank, before I let you go, do you want to add anything else? No, look, great card Saturday night, you know, stacked as well. You know, you've got the Smith Vargas fight, as you say, you've got Galaria fight on there, you've got Cruz Dizern against Cedaros as well. Um, Austin Williams, as we said, Sky Nicholson's back out again. And then we go to Vegas for, for um, Canelo against Dimitri Bivol. Again, another great card there. You've got Montana Love uh, is there against Valenzuela in a brilliant fight. Um, you know, just a just a great few weeks of boxing. So very exciting, lots to look forward to, and uh, yeah, looking forward to Saturday night. Firstly, enjoy the jet lag in about two and a half weeks' time. Then, no, no I don't get jet lag. It's a frame of mind. Sweet, thank you. Cheers.